All right, everybody. Welcome to another game to determine who makes it into Division S Season 2. The Crucible in Europe goes into another best of three match. We have Pepe, my lady, and the Me Machine going up against each other. And this is another one of the games that will determine directly which team is playing in the second season of Division S. And to the left side, we already have Pepe, my lady, with the Will Q, the Polish team here with ETC. Richu on Chen. Uh, Defcio on Hanzo, Dyla on Anna, and Gorida on Sylvanas. Towards the right side of the map, Death Knight on Malganis, Fake Taxi on Dehaka, Kupshi on Rega, Slake on Alarak, and Smarakt is playing Li Ming in this game. And it all starts with a bit of a face check. Death Knight running straight into the bush, and that nearly cost him his life, but. As it happens, Melganis is able to walk away from this one, but that was definitely a close call. So the blue team with a bit of a warning shot against the Mii Machine. And some teams or some viewers currently on YouTube might still ask themselves, hey, Carlo, what exactly is actually going on here? We had so many qualifiers, so many grand finals. How does this all fit together? And as I said in some of the previous games, this is actually the Crucible. And all the qualifiers that you've seen in the, the last week were all to participate in the Crucible itself. So this is the final tournament where we in total determine four teams that will participate in the second season of Division S. Now, of course, there's, there are already a couple couple of teams that are qualified as is, for example, the team of Hazorps and also, well, Washed Up and also Lauber's Fan Club and a few others. But in total, four teams will join them and one of the two here will make it. Losing team is going to be out of the competition here, whereas the winner has the chance to secure themselves a spot. And at this point, we already have, of course, everything on the line, so both are very highly motivated to show their best here. And by the way, if you currently watch the video on YouTube, then first of all, you are always welcome to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. But also keep in mind that you can go to calda.tv if you want to check out the live schedule, if you want to have some more information about a lot of the tournaments that I'm actually casting on the channel here. But the live streaming schedule is usually available on the website. I'm going to try and update it as much as I can depending on how the tournaments of course pop in there but yeah definitely have a look there and you might be able to catch the stream live on twitch but with all of that said cams are being taken by the two teams and in this case we actually have paper my lady the polish team that is starting to make the first move towards the night camp now rega is going up on the right side too but the camp is already underway for the blue team, so there's an opportunity to uh, go for a push. And that's exactly why Gorider is currently moving topside. With Sylvanas, he can, of course, empower that push even more. So that's fantastic timing for them. Not only can they put some pressure onto the Haka, but more importantly, they have a really good shot of breaking this wall down. Nice drag against Chen, though. Really well done. And Richu has to jump out on Chen. But with this little push, the wall is most likely going to be taken down now by the blue team. Nice moves here by Sylvanas, and with the help of the night camp, they can take down the towers and notch and also the gate itself. That of course also means that with all of the resources used topside, that there's a bit more pressure from the red team on other lanes on the map. But this is actually adding up quite a bit. So Death Knight comes in with Malganis and tries to uh, set something up for a counter play, especially of course for Snake, but it's the drag that we're seeing and then the attack against Ana, which is the most dangerous, but Dyla makes it out for now. It's a good combo from Alarak that puts a bit more spice to the move, but at the end, everybody is walking away from this one. Bottom lane, that might be a bit of a different story. Smaragd is able to juke out Devcio, and that was an important one. But obviously the top lane is now under the control of the red team, which allows them to control also the shrine and therefore avoid Dragonite. Best of three series, usually ah, the kill against Alarak, nicely played. Ah, game number one obviously sets the tone in the best of three series. So if you win here, then you go into the second map with quite a bit of momentum that you can use for yourself, which is exactly what the two are currently trying to pull off here. ETC is still holding on to the bottom of the map as much as he can, but going up against two heroes, he won't be able to do that for too long. But Ana is sitting in the middle. Will Q is buying some time, and Dyla sneaks it in. Well played. Great move by ETC at the bottom of the map, holding the shrine against two just long enough for Ana to channel the Dragonite. And with that, we will see at least a few of the structures in the middle now fall too. And the team is spreading out. They're not focusing their entire attention on only one map. Instead, we're seeing Smarag being attacked at the bottom of the map and even going down here. Nice kill. 
as the combo just misses Gore Rider. He's trying to get away. And that's not the only thing that's happening. At the top side, we have another big push happening. As Hanzo and Chen are making their move for the fort. Nicely done here. The Dragonite, by the way, in the middle of the map. Nearly successful against the fort, but Anna obviously a bit worried. Can't stay too long, has no escape tools once that she pops out of the Dragonite, so needs to be cautious here. Slake at the bottom of the map, also taking a bit of a beating. Ah, that one was tempting. Gore Rider was really, really tempted here to jump in on the wave and uh, take him down, but Slake survives and taps the fountain. It's still a big lead. Two kills against zero, that is pretty respectable, and even if Will Q falls here, yeah, and he should. Yeah, he's definitely gonna fall. <laughs> then they still have the one level lead over their opponent. So off to a good start. The blue team is doing well. By the way, we have Echo Paddle on level 7 for ETC. So very likely Stage Dive is going to be the weapon of choice on the Heroic for ETC so that he can take over the side lane against the Haka whenever they need the use of a global in this game. Now the uh, a little bit more common Globe Talent on level 4 still in tandem with Calamity on level 7, the only real choice on level 7 for Li Ming. Still by far the best talent. If Blizzard wants to create a bit more talent diversity on level 7, they have to either take Calamity down a notch, or they have to go ahead and buff the remaining talents there. But at least on the level 4 talent, after they nerf dominance a little bit, we now see a lot more diversity, especially around the globe talent, but also with the missiles, which we've seen several times from Maka in the past, especially on maps like Battlefield of Eternity, for example. The attack on level 7, there's just no way that the red team is actually making a move for this. They're poking around a little bit, ETC is even going in for the stage dive, just making the better safe than sorry play in case there is an actual fight happening. But the camp, it gets a stone either way. So the game is actually calming down a little bit. It's starting to stabilize slightly. Without the level 10 abilities, the Mii Machine couldn't really do a whole lot here. But they might actually have a chance to go for Chen as a combo. That drag connects, and that could honestly be a kill, but there's still the ult to consider. And they turn it. Nice ancestral on Slake. Fantastic play here. But at the same time, having Hansa moving in from the side, trying to get still the kill against Alarak as we once again have a drag connecting from the Arca, and that's the end of Hansel this time. Nicely done. Chen doesn't give up and gets the counter kill against Alarak, but the fight isn't over just yet. Malganis is moving away. Whereas we're seeing Chen jumping out, but another drag would definitely mean the end for him. Fake Taxi comes in, but he doesn't connect one this time. Three kills against two, and nicely played here by both teams as they walk away with a kill against the opponent. But we still have those shrines up on the map again. And all of a sudden, there's an opportunity. Chen jumps in again. Egg Taxi is going in for the drag and gets it. But the fight is still ongoing, and at the same time, these bad boys in the bot lane have actually done some serious damage already. That fountain is pretty much eliminated, and now we have heroes moving on every single lane, and then again, there is the aggression against the Dragonite. And that's a double channel, ETC holds it, and Richer in the middle channel, so nobody interrupts at the bottom of the map, they are a little bit too late, and that's Dragonite number two. And the minion wave is already pushing straight into the middle. It's a bad, bad moment to be on the side of the meme machine as they are getting absolutely murdered on the objective. That's the second Dragonite that they just lost. And that means the fort in the mid lane is destroyed. At the bottom of the map, the fight is happening. But there comes ETC as he slides in too. They're trying to go for the kill. Dragonite is coming in as well. And we have Juke City as Hanzo jukes nearly everything. But he's not able to juke the isolation. And that's the end of Hanzo. He can stick the bow where the sun doesn't shine as Malganis and Dihaka are still zoning the rest of the team. The Dragon Knight already took a bit of a beating but is still participating in the battle. Goes for another breath and starts to take the 8 points down. Smirak trying to make a play against Will Q. Not quite successful. But the Dragon Knight in this case still moving away. The kill goes to the Mune Machine. But the fort goes to the blue team. And despite the fact that we're now even in kills, the meme machine is behind. They are behind in experience and they are fairly behind when it comes to structures on the map. Which is of course a huge factor right now since they haven't been able to take a single fort down yet. And that means that we still have a fountain on, on the complete outer ring on the map for the blue team. So a nice opportunity to tap whenever they need to before engaging into the team fight. Another camp is already about to be taken. And there's pings happening on the red team side too as they are signaling, L listen guys, we need to go for the night camp here. If we don't, then we have a bit of a problem. And they might even steal this one away. 
Chen with the experience soak at the bottom of the map. The level 13 talents, remorses for Sylvanas is now also in action. And thanks to them taking the camp, they're starting to make the move on the right side. Bit of a ballsy choice, to be honest. Smaragd is sitting there, and I'm honestly not sure if that's really a fight that they want to take yet. 13 is not that far away for the meme machine. And they are willing to fight for this one and defend it, and rightfully so. Here comes the combo against Chen. Not quite with the result that they were hoping for just yet. The follow-up is just not strong enough to take the panda down, at least not that easily. And still with a level lead, but without a talent advantage, they decide instead to make the move down to the bottom. Taking down the Siege Giants, and maybe even making the move towards the night camp at the bottom of the map. But the Harka is topside right now, and he could at any point global down if need be, so there is a chance. That we're going to see the fight over the remaining camp on the map. Mass pings all over the place at this point. But here comes another quick combo against the minion wafers. They're trying to clear that up. The bottom is as expected attacked. ETC on the way in the middle. It's all about the vision right now. The Haka is actually coming in early. The Haka goes in early. The red team is trying to turn on its head. They're just trying to go immediately for it. Death Knight is already sniffed out. They're going for another quick poke. And ETC could jump in too. This could be a disaster for the red team if they get caught here. And Chen is already jumping in. Chen wants it. The drag doesn't connect. And what has set up the arrow from Sylvanas. And the double kill against Rega and against Chen. The camp is about to be taken. Alarak is down. They're going for Li Ming. And she's also dead. Morgana is the only survivor. And that just happens three seconds before the Dragonite is active again. They go through the bottom like a hot butter through cheese and in this case boom the fort is down etc moves top side and everybody else is pushing through the bottom of the map and that should be an easy key together with the dragon knight ah well we're actually only 11 minutes into the game so maybe they're not gonna get this keep as easily as i thought but they're definitely gonna do a lot of damage with this etc has taken top shrine control and is moving mid lane now to get the dragon knight here as well but they walked through the entire wall and now with a five-man defense from the red team it's definitely a little bit more resistance now honestly i thought we were already later into the game with that time as being a little bit higher that's not the case though Level 16 talents still give a huge boost in uh, talents over to uh, the Paper My Lady. And Middledore's Me Machine is having some issues here at the bottom of the map. They've been on the defense for a long time, but the discrepancy between the two teams was never that big. Now all of a sudden with such a huge lead, we're seeing the blue team trying to make the moves now for the fort. It's already the keep itself, and I don't really think that there's a chance that they're going to save this one. No, that's definitely not. Novel Sylvana is enhancing the push even more. So they can easily move away from this one. They don't have to go for it just yet. But keep in mind, this is still 16 against 14. Uh, sorry, against 13 in terms of talents. Here comes the attack. And that move should be a kill against Malganis. He barely gets out. Dragonite still active. And ETC is all the way up at the front. But they decide against making any crucial moves here. There's honestly no need to risk it. This is a hugely important best of three series. I mean, this decides if you can participate in the second season of Division S or not. So you need to also show a little bit of just, I mean, of discipline and a calm playstyle when you are ahead and you can't just YOLO onto the core whenever there's an opportunity. I mean, obviously, when you see a good chance to take the core down, you should always try and make that move. But at the same time, if they get now wiped at the core, not only would their opponent be back to business, but it would be pretty much an experience lead even for the meme machine. So there's a lot to lose with all that momentum that has been built up over the past 12 minutes by the blue team. And they're trying to just adhere to that. There's half a level missing for level 16 to drop into the hands of the meme machine now as well. But of course the goal of the blue team is to reach level 20 in a reasonable time frame and maybe make a play for the next Dragonite to finish the game with it. On the damage numbers, just as we're having a closer look at that, we have 25,000 on Alarak. He's the top damage dealer currently for the red team. And at the same time, 48,000 on the side of Sylvana. She's been absolutely killing it this far. Hanzo is a little bit farther ahead when he comes to the siege damage, but that's a bit of a problem. Yeah, that's a nice connect, and Hanzo is down. Extremely well played by the Haka. That was actually a nice setup. Fake Taxi killing it. Seems to be the new Sugar Daddy 69 for everybody who remembers that bad boy. I mean, those isolations and those drags, they are absolutely on point, and he is killing it with the Haka, so good on him. That's a nice kill and a desperately needed one. They have 30 seconds in which they have a bit more map control, thanks to the level 16 talents. So at least on the talent level, the 
to be a problem. Fake taxi in trouble, but he gets away. Rega Ku come and collected. Drops also the ancestral. They're trying to get a lockdown against Richu. But the panda is escaping. Bot lane again is pushing though, and there's actually a siege giant camp at the bottom of the map. That is a problem. That's a big problem. That core could take a lot of damage. ETC jumps out, not willing to die for the cause here. But the red team is still pushing the top of the map. And guys, this is an issue. That's two catapults and a siege giant camp. One catapult is getting body blocked at the, for this point, so that's not really too great for it. But here comes Hanzo with a big boy arrow, and it connects against two. Nicely done. And the core is losing shields on the right side. We already have the big fight at the top of the map, but ETC can now slide in and does exactly that against Alarak, and that's an easy kill, or at least it should be, and there he goes down. Talk about going down, the core is falling, 70% only. Those catapults are racking it. Rega is about to fall, and we see Li Ming die as well. The entire team is getting wiped off the floor here. Death Knight, the only survivor, and if you look at the bottom of the map, there's three catapults and a siege shines doing massive, massive work. 35% on the core. Now Melganis is about to die on the left side, and that is the conclusion of game number one. Yep, that is it. That's the lead for Paper My Lady against the Me Machine in the best of three series. GG and well played as the blue team takes the victory on Dragonshire and the lead in this best of three to make it into the second season of Division S. Game number two, ladies. Let's go. Yeah, we have a little bit of a different setup, actually, for the second map. Battlefield of Eternity. Very different approach here, especially from the Polish team. The will queue for Pepe Malady with Varian, Defzion, Liming, and Dylan Anna. So again, the nano-boosted Liming combo, but this time with Varian. So once you have the taunt set up ready, you can really start and destroy heroes on the other side. Richu on Arthurs and Gore Rider on Greymane. And over to the right side, the Me Machine with Death Knight on Johanna, Fake Taxi on Mirrodin. We have a Slake on Tracer, Kupchi. Currently playing on Malfurion and Smaragd on Chromie. So they have actually a fair amount of poke here currently, but I gotta say that this setup with Varian plus burst damage in form of Greymane and Liming is always nasty when you have a tough time playing around it. Of course, with the Nature's Cure on the side of Malfurion, you always have a feel of a tool that you can use against it, but it's a cooldown battle that Varian is going to win here for sure. And if you just use a little bit of a setup, it's going to really hurt and when it get very, very tough to keep those heroes alive. Especially true, of course, for Tracer, who has by default an incredibly small hero hit point pool that can be exploited by a composition like this quite easily. But also Malfurion. If you are able to make it forward to uh, get a contact with Mal, then you know he's in trouble. Same is also true for uh, Groby, at least up to the point when she can dodge a little bit with the timeout. But this could be a really hit point heavy game here on the side of Hidden My Lady if executed correctly. It's actually like a, a, I casted a Division 7 game the other day where also Varian was played and I explained actually in length why Taunt is the go-to talent for the hero and what the benefits are. And there are still people that just don't understand how this game is being played, always trying to argue in the comment section. But my smash, my meme blades, and you don't understand, that, that requires coordination. It's a sad, sad statement about the state of the community if it is called high level of coordination when uh, you are asking someone to drop their spell not on a moving target but on a stunned one. If that is already seen as a high level of coordination then it's small wonder that so many people are stuck in bronze or well platinum or something. That honestly amazes me every single time. Best thing that you can do if you ever want to play in a bit of an amateur scene, pick a setup like this execute a little bit and just make sure that you hold the cooldowns with burst damage until the target is stunned by you know, like Varian, Arthas with a Howling Blast, maybe Murder with a Stormbolt, any of those heroes. That's pretty much what we're looking for here. But yeah, it's 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 honestly a little bit sad. Ah not as sad as that Stormbolt though. That one did not connect. Richard at the top is so far doing a pretty decent job simply by staying safe. I mean he doesn't have to win the lane against two heroes or anything. Uh, yep, there we go. And with level 4 that we now have, 
There's the Taunt, again, the only actual good talent on that tier level, outside of you playing, of course, quick match. Or well, if you don't want to win, then both is fine. But Taunt definitely, especially against heroes like Tracer, Malv, and uh, low HP heroes, a fantastic talent to set up kills if you have some burst damage on your team. <laughs> Talking burst damage, that burst nearly took Chromie down, and she barely made it out of range. But they are already uh, heading into an experience advantage. I don't think that's going to translate into level 7 time around objective number 1, but still, it absolutely counts here. There's a bit of a defense that they've set up, but the rest of the team is already busying themselves at the top trying to take the opponent's immortal down. And that's exactly where we are right now. Trying to take this one at the bottom on the other hand. Will Q is in a bit of trouble. Good combo from uh, Li Ming. Anna trying to make sure that Will Q stays alive on Varian and is able to pull that off. But the halftime show is pretty much a go for the blue team. Muradin is trying to, well, take Raymond down a notch, but that so far has failed a little bit. So uh, the Polish team is doing pretty fantastic. And thanks to Li Ming being a great hero on this map for exactly this outside poke, they can just now move in and try and take it down slowly but steadily. And the Mi Machine is more or less forced into a defensive position, but they get the lockdown against Ana with a good Storm Bolt for Murden. And then Tracer is present immediately to ensure that they are getting a hero kill in. And that might just help them to even the score on the Immortal. Problematic, of course, that Greyman is now moving in too. And Li Ming is still doing what she does best, poking from the outside, long distance here. Level 7 talents are also close for them. Will Q is still a little bit careful here. Has also gone in with the taunt. They're still massively in the lead. And of course, with the low cooldown that we have on the death timers, we all of a sudden see Anna back to business. And she can get this done, but Li Ming still dies. Nice play by Slake as he jumps in and takes the kill. Tracer takes Li Ming apart. But they're still fighting for the first objective. But the chances of the red team to actually take this one are, of course, a bit limited here, especially with the continuous poke that we have our, uh, around, especially Li Ming now that she's back, but also Greymane. It's getting a little bit closer though, I gotta give them that. In comes the attack again, there's the taunt against Jojo, and therefore the follow-up kill nicely played by the team in blue. Easy peasy, go in, hit the taunt, follow up with the damage, and then just go for it. And they're doing the exact same thing now with the Immortal 2. Take it down. With level 7, we also see Calamity at this point for Li Ming. Because they are looking absolutely nice here to set themselves slightly ahead in game number 2. And let's not forget, they have the lead in this best of 3 series. It is the semi-final of the loser bracket, of the lower bracket in this Crucible tournament. And the team that takes this qualifies for Division S for the second season. The losing team drops out. It's an all or nothing situation right now. It's looking quite good for Pip, my lady. Now, there's a lot of comeback potential, obviously, also on the side of the machine. We talked a lot about how especially the combo around Varian with his taunt and the burst damage is incredibly dangerous to a lot of heroes on the red team side. But Slake on Tracer has so far done a really, really good job with a lot of the attacks that we've seen. A nice lockdown here, actually, against Varian as he dives in a little bit too deep and gets punished for it immediately. They get the fort at the top, so that's at least something. But Tracer is looking for the next kill and gets it against Anna. Uh, fantastic counter kill by Devzio, though, as he immediately goes for the rewind spot. As Tracer re-emerges, hits the Calamity and gets the kill in. But I still gotta give some credit to Tracer. She does a fantastic job here, assisted, obviously, by Malfurion. But generally speaking, doing a great job trying to keep the a team on par with the opponent when it comes to kills and experience. So that's a big one. And as long as Varian is dodged a little bit, she does that fairly well here. So, as it stands, in terms of talent choices, we actually see on level 7 again the heavy impact. And I gotta admit, after what we've seen from the Mii Machine just in the last game that they played back then, still in the winner bracket, I'm a little bit worried about what we're going to see on level 10. Is that going to be another Haymaker game when Murdin tries to make the plays here? Or are we this time going to see Avatar for him and the additional sustain that he gets through that? Rayman most likely going to go for the bullet, considering the setup. Go for the throat would be pretty cool for him too, against Tracer. And he actually focuses on that. I kind of expected him to go for the bullet against the heavy tank frontline. 
since they already have barrier in here with taunt to uh, make Tracer's life a living hell. But they really, really want to make sure that they can shut her down whenever. So Tracer it is. That's the setup against Greyman, and he goes down. Fantastic. Nice play. The quest completed from Chromie 2, and we indeed have Haymaker. And there's the kill. The Playmaker moves straight into Malfurion's ult. That was synergy. That was a combo right there. That was a lot harder to execute than a simple stun the target and then drop some burst damage on it. That was actually really, really well done, especially from a timing perspective. So all of a sudden, the meme machine starting to jump in and doing some solid work here. Seven kills against two already. I'm impressed. Ah, they're doing some solid work with this. And <laughs> I gotta admit that that Haymaker into Malfurion's Twilight Dream was pretty fantastic. That was pretty sweet. So, as it stands, the Mii Machine takes the halftime show. They win the first half of the objective, but now it's a 5 versus 5 again, and we're still on even talents, we're still on even experience, even levels. So, uh, this is now going to be another poke battle, and the question if or not... Oh, the taunt! Ah, oh, good damage right here. Where's the timeout when you need it? He has the talent available, but hasn't picked it yet. Greyman, on the other hand, is already down. It looks like they're trying to get a second kill against Arthur's. And Arthur's gets wrecked. Chromie is currently shitting all over them. She might be a fake dragon, but she's a real danger in this game. Varian also getting body blocked here. Nice sleeping dart from Anna. And leaving even with an attempt at in play. Has to use the uh, teleportation again to get out of the sandblast range. And I gotta give it to Chromie. I mean, let's let's take a look at the numbers actually. Chromie should be pretty high up here. 24,000 for her. Li Ming on 31,000, so that in and of itself is not really too bad. Oh, I like that! But the Immortal Stun is a little bit too late. So they get some extra damage in against the Immortal, which allows them now to reduce the shields, but they can't obviously change the fact that this is an Immortal for the red team. The Meme Machine with the Meme Dream up at the top, going in with the objective, and also a slightly inexperienced now. Maybe even a chance to head into level 13 talents as they're pushing this through. Timeout is now ready for Chromie, so once that we're seeing Varian coming in and trying to taunt her again, she at least has a bit of a counter play available to her. But here comes the Immortal, and they want to at least get that port, honestly. I mean, we're 10 minutes into the game now. The Immortal is not super strong just yet, but it should be strong enough to do some serious hour at the top lane. But they're not really pushing for this. They're especially a bit afraid since Arthas has disappeared from the bot lane and they are not willing to run into a 5 versus 4 with Arthas flanking against them. Instead there's actually a rotation towards the bot side as they attempt to get some damage done here too. Uh, Deathnet was sitting at the center. It's, it's a little bit of a trap attempt that they have. Trying to recreate their own Star Wars moment here. But it's not quite working out that way. Because top side is where the blue team is going just simply for another camp and doing her thing. So, yep, there we go. Bot lane, talking about camps, uh, there's another Kazura camp taken too. So, 13 talents are now available on both sides. And with that, we have again fights on eye level. There's a bit of an advantage for the red team initially, but they couldn't capitalize on it. It comes against the attack. Oh, an early taunt actually by Will Q here. Yeah, dropping that taunt early, and they are able to take half the HP off Jana, but not much more than that. Stormbolt connects again, and there's the kill. Chromie once more connecting the damage, and fight after fight is now ending in favor of the red team. They're trying to jump in again with another play. The attempt to go to get to Arthur's didn't quite work out, but it is Varian who dies once more. Varian down, and now the push to the bottom of the map. And guys, this is very much the reversal of game number one so far. The meme machine is just stomping all over Pip and my lady. I mean, they are crushing them here. The idea was clear of what the blue team was trying to execute with Varian. But Tracer is so far really unimpressed with all of this. And Chromie too, so they're doing exceptionally well with this heavy frontline around Johanna and Muradin to ensure that they have continuous, slow CC storm bolts against the opponent's damage dealers, especially, of course, Greyman, but also to a huge extent Varian when he tries to get close enough for a good taunt to enable that setup for Li Ming. So the front line is doing wonders for them now. But the objective is up again, and they're a bit delayed because they're making the play for the Shaman camp slightly later. 
So that's a freebie for the blue team. I'm honestly a bit surprised that they didn't abandon the idea of going for the camp earlier. Oh, that's unfortunate. Stormbolt, Endless, Shield, both miss, but Chromie's damage doesn't. Gore Rider is still able to get away. The problem is that Malfurion is now low, and there's their kill. Devcio gets blinded, but the Sandblast this time is out of range, so they can't get the kill here. Instead, it's Chromie that gets attacked, and there's the taunt, and there's the kill. And the follow-up. Greymane dies, but not before he takes down Chromi plus Tracer. Both of them eliminated. Muradin is also low, and he dies to Liming. Liming gets also eliminated. It's just the, the big massacre of 2019 here. Six kills in this team fight alone that leaves Johanna up on the map, but three heroes are still ready for the blue team, and they are ready to rock and roll to get the halftime show going for the blue team. Paper, my lady, again threatening another immortal now. Yeah, but the top, forward again, down. Shamans have been doing some serious work here. But as the game continues, the immortal becomes more and more important, obviously. I mean, at this point, you are seriously just looking at a setup in which you can argue, uh, hey, a late game immortal, when it scales perfectly, is just incredibly powerful. So this matters a lot. Especially since it's just taken before the opponent hits level 16. So at the end of the day, it just means that you're going to have both teams on even talents when this becomes an issue. The Immortal is gonna move through the bottom of the map. And with them now even focusing on the camp here, they're gonna have their Shaman camp too. And 16 talents now on both sides, which gives Muradin the extra range on the jump, so he's a bit of an easier setup for his Haymaker. But obviously the blue team also has some huge power spikes now, especially when we're looking over to Li Ming on the mirror ball. It's definitely gonna be helpful. But that ranged poke from Smoragdon is Chromie is still pretty solid. That's what they're going for right now. In comes the attack again up at the top. Ritchu is sitting there trying to flank in with a Howling Blast. That didn't quite work, but there it is. Another attempt at locking down Muradin, this time with the taunt. Low cooldown, of course, so you can YOLO it out. As you want. And they're making the kill happen against Muradin. Greymane went in, got the kill, got the reset, and now all of a sudden they're starting to threaten the keep itself. And the situation gets a little bit dire for the Mii Machine. They are still heavily ahead in kills, but that doesn't help them jack shit if they are behind in experience, and they're starting to lose the map on a macro level. Structures at the bottom of the map get attacked, and we actually have Pepe My Lady pushing in hard. If they take this map, then it's all over. A 2-0 victory for them would allow them to move into Division S Season 2, and it would mean the end for the meme machine, at least when it comes to their ambitions for the second season. So on the damage side, as more camps are now taken again, we're looking at 42,000 damage from Chromie, 45,000 for uh, especially Li Ming, who by the way died four times already. Nobody died more often, but still the damage numbers are there. Now we're having also 36,000 damage from Greyman, which isn't too bad either. But yeah, Varian 19,000 hero damage, but of course for him it's more so the CC that he really supplies in these team fights. And he is threatening the backline quite a bit. I mean, you can always tell that there's at least one hero on Varian duty to make sure that he's not being able to jump in too much. So, well, let's see how this is gonna more plan out. There's a camp taken at the top. Ford is gonna be taken down. They need to hurry back though. And they need to do that quickly, because the blue team just says like, you know what, fuck it, let's take the keep, give them the fort, we don't care, and this is a lot of free damage. Especially with Greymane, I mean, they're pretty much taking this one. They nearly got this one. This one is nearly down, here comes the attack and the forced fight that we have around it. And Arthur's is still alive, that's a problem. Devsy on Liming is still trying to set another kill up and give himself a reset here. And they're actually getting that reset. The reset is in, Johanna throws the blessed shield up, but that didn't do enough. And Tracer nearly gets a kill against Arthur's. But on the way back, she is annihilated too. Two kills against them. Greymane falls, but I think this keep is going to die one way or another. Catapults are still homing in on it and they, it's incredibly low. They might just be able to hold it. Nah, they can't. Oh God, and that hurts. That's two keeps down, continuous catapult pressure now through both lanes. Yeah, they're in trouble and they know it too. A five versus three on the map now. Muradin jumps in, another Stormbolt connects. Good attacks actually against Vilkyr here. Like, oh my God, the ult from Chromie comes in. 
and he's trying to dodge out on all of the damage and does dodge most of it. Protected, by the way, as he's trying to force Muradin and Muradin jumps out, plays it safe. But it also means that Varian gets away scot-free. So now with the level ahead, there's continuous pings that we're currently seeing towards Varian as he barely survived, but that Immortal is a problem. And guys, there's another problem here. Three catapults at the bottom of the map, one so far up at the top, but soon to be joined by a second one. They're still behind by kills, uh, in kills, but they are starting to really, really threaten this. And it's actually Tracer that moved down to the bottom to take the catapults out, and she's actually been able to do that. And that was a really important move. Slake is honestly playing a great game here. He's done incredibly well in a lot of these team fights, gotten important kills for the teams, and this little move against the catapults was really, really crucial, but the team fight, they haven't won it yet, and they need to, and Tracer goes down first. Tracer goes down immediately. Calamity attempt against Malfurion, and he goes down as well. Two heroes already killed. They go for the fake taxi. And, well, <laughs> that's the playmaker move. Muradin jumps out. The problem is that the rest of the team is in trouble. Here comes the timeout on Chromie, but she can't get away from this one. It's not happening. Greyman comes in, gets the kill, and now all of a sudden, first of all, the core is open. The objective is open, too. They're trying to get the kill now against Johanna, and I think they're going to get this one as well. Death Knight goes down, and with five heroes still on the map, they have an open shot towards the opponent's core. 20 on the board for them, the Storm Talons are in, and this is an attempt to seal the deal here with a 2-0 victory against the Meme Machine. Great play, they go for Muradin, the Dwarf dies, and so do the hopes of the Meme Machine to make it into Division S for Season 2. Pepe, my lady, with a convincing 2-0 victory over their opponent here. They qualify for the second season of Division S Europe. Well played, 2-0 series victory, and yeah, there's a deserved victory at that. GG, and well done. Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video, and I hope that you enjoyed the match and the commentary. The remaining time of the video has been added to protect against spoilers caused by the length of the video itself. But please keep in mind, though, that this does not only mean more work for me, but also has a negative impact on the popularity of the videos and the channel because of YouTube's algorithms. It would be greatly appreciated if you'd consider supporting the channel and help me to continue the daily esports coverage by clicking the join button below the video or supporting me through the Proterium page linked in the video description. Thanks a lot for the support and see you guys next time.